Jordu sculpted this. He's so good with anatomy and things. So he sculpted her. Tom helped because he was in a rush to get home. But so he did one hand, Tom did the other. He did one foot, Tom did the other, stuff like that. But primarily the face and concept is uh, Jordu. And then uh, Tom painted her with this kind of white shark, great white shark paint job. It's very cool. Right, and the costume we had custom made by this lace allows you to see, that it says there's so much cool stuff on the sculpture. It's like, we don't want to cover that up. She is always in ambient mode, so there's kind of background moaning, background screaming, Small lightning. Lightning, yeah. Right. And then when she's activated, um, she, she rises. And then she rises up, but she looks like she has a normal face. But in actuality, she's got this giant mouth sculpted to her chest, and her head just tips back and just this crazy mouth. goals when we're making stuff is like to make the ultimate Halloween prop and I started saying this to sculptors we we don't want a scarecrow we want the scarecrow we want the star of the film so in this box comes the stand mr. scarecrow's head which we put a lot of work into this and this is his little friend Corvus isn't he cute? I want you to see that eye. We actually put glass eyes in here. There's the legs and the box. This stuff, uh, all is UPSable. So the main part of his body is the head and shoulders, and the hands are posable, completely posable. Now, we went to the extra expense to put wires and foam in these so you can do whatever you want. And that is really a cool feature. And the legs are very tall and skinny and they're completely ready to go. And you slide them in to, it's, there's plastic pipes. And stand them up. Pipes slide into these leg pipes. And you know, you can do it by yourself, but it's always nice to have help. Then just, Kind of pull up his pants a little bit. Um, you can use pins if you want to kind of hold them in place, get the shirt pulled over them. So when you're putting the head on, it's way up there. So uh, make sure the, the bib is folded out of the way and then just kind of wrangle him on and get him into position. And make sure he's down completely and then he put his little friend. Now, what we did, we actually burn a hole through the latex, and you may need to find that hole. It's subtle. We, you know, we want to make it so if you want to use the crow, you can use the crow. If you don't want to use the crow, you don't have to. But get it in that hole, and then you'll see the hole in his shirt, and line those up, 
And you may have to wrangle him around a little bit and twist him to get him in position. But he's not quite in position. I don't know where he So the nice thing about this, besides his fingers being mobile, you can raise his arms, you can bend his arms in the position you want. This is Frankenstein's experiment. Now we designed this around Mary Shelley's original Frankenstein script. And the, she described kind of this yellowy flesh, or just kind of yellowy green. And then gray eyes, black hair, very tall. And this is what he does. It comes with everything. The sound, the control systems, fog machine, lighting effects. And so it's a complete package and it's all heavy metal, as usual, bulletproof. It's run by 110 and you just need air, compressed air, and 110 power. The program's on it, the sound's on it, everything is there and uh, he's ready to go. Frankenstein's experiment. This is the Scarewolf legend. So your Scarewolf's arrived, let's get him out of the box. This is a big boy, and we figured out how to get him in a pretty small box. So it's three parts. One is the stand and then the legs. And you just need to guide these on to the poles and that fits onto the base. And just slide them on the base like that. Get his pants out a little, away a little bit maybe. And then he's all folded up. And you do the same. You just get the poles lined up and put them right in like that. And down he goes. Now, you may need to use some force to get him in there and it pulls pants up a little bit and get the shirt pulled over it and then just extend the arms once you get him up um, you can move the arms what we did both because he was designed as an animatronic with his arms always stay up and thrust around so we needed to make him so that you could move his arms so we've got wires in here and we've cut away the foam that's hidden, of course, under the shirt to really be able to move them. We cut the foam in back and freed up those arms so that they not only could he ship like this, which was very important for cost, but also so you could bring those arms and do whatever you want. These can be bent, you know, that's a little too much probably. But anyway, it gives you a lot of control, whether he's back, high, down, you can put him down. We were talking about bringing back another spider because it was, it, we, we talked about it a couple years, hadn't done it. And then you drew some and it was looking good, but then you drew this. Yeah. And it was so weird. I mean, I loved it instantly. I, and Marsha loved it too. You know, I thought an alien spider of some sort could be cool, uh, especially with stuff like the mutant and alien parasite. Uh, you know, we've kind of proved that there is a place for sci-fi in the haunt world. And he's got a little extra set of teeth there. That was so cool. But it's just a really creepy thing. You can hang it and put it on the floor. Yeah. What else could you do with him, Tom? Well, you know, these legs are remarkably poseable. 
uh, the, the armature system works that they pose best right at the joints where you kind of want them yes. to be moving. So it's almost like a, an oversized action figure. What you get is legs, and this very crazy critter. It's pretty easy to put together. Um, I want to show you a little trick to put the legs on. It's really fast. If you have a table of some kind, you just start by laying it down and you need to go up. So you hold the other three and you grab one of the legs and go up. And then you hold the other two legs, go up, up, and now you'll have to hold these legs and lift this one up. So that's the first bend. The second bend is everything, this, this row goes down. So you go down, down, and I'm not, you know, I'm like doing 45 degrees. Same with the last knuckle. And these are designed in a really cool way. They only bend at the knuckles. And then you take that and open them up. Now these can be bent, you know, depending on how you want them. They could wrap around rocks or whatever you want, but you do that to both legs. So once you flip this over, you'll see there's a, a metal bar with two bolts. And so grab one of the legs and it slides in. And this is really strong stuff. You know, it's all welded metal. I mean, this is really, tough stuff. That is it. And then you can play with the legs to get exactly where you want them, but they need to go, they need to start by going up. And then these can elevate them as well as this bend. And you just get them right where you want them. The nice thing about these props is first of all, they're made with natural latex rubbers, very, very strong. And then they're filled with polyurethane foam, which is spongy, but really strong. Back it up. That's good. Hey, hey, back up. That's good. Hey, 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 stand down. Hey, good, that's good. Back up, stand down. Ah, get out of there. Close the door. Are you crazy? Close the door! Tony, okay? I think so. Oh no. It's a good thing I sculpt right handed. This is the Raptor, and it's the animatronic uh, version. This is Raptor Attack, and he jumps out at you in addition to moving. Calm down, it's all right. The other one's just a little late. It's okay, it's okay, go back in your cage. And this one is the Raptor Display. This is made with natural latex rubber, which is very, very tough. And inside of that is polyurethane foam, which is also very tough. Now, there's three different paint jobs. We're gonna offer all paint jobs on all three. So there's actually nine different products here. So if you want this guy and you want him in green, we'll paint him in green. If you want him in blue, if you want him in orange. So the, all the different ones come in all the colors. The rocks are separate. If some people might want to just blacken the area out, it's in a dark room, they don't need them. But the rocks just wrap around all the mechanics and hide it, basically. All you can run them is compressed air, 
you know, it has an air fitting, you plug in a compressor, and we don't provide the compressor. And electricity, just one can electricity. And they come to life. They have these uh, control boxes that we have produced with all the valves and, and, and flow controls. Everything's in these boxes. You can see these cylinders are lighting up as, as they're um, programming. So you know, and you can push the red button to see what's what. These are flow controls. Now we set these at the factory and, and really those should, should stay. If he's not moving well enough, you probably don't have a strong enough compressor. But there are everything set. This is a really nice amp we use in these, and um, it's loud. The rock has slits, so the sound comes through. But the rock just slides on. Velcro's in place. So Raptor Attack has the same high-quality amp, and it's kind of open here, so the sound just pours out. Um, incredibly heavy duty. This is, we had this all custom made. These are a special plastic, super hard industrial plastic that is pushed out by a giant cylinder and that box, just like this one, same box is hidden under a bigger uh, cover. This is incredibly heavy duty metal and you can see it move here. So this is Invasion of the Saucerman. This was a movie that came out in 1956. And these guys were sculpted by Paul Blaisdell and he did a phenomenal job. This is back in the day of classic movie monsters. The original was this kind of color. It was kind of an orangey flesh and we were able to get the original molds for these guys. And so from, from Paul's widow. In fact, they had to carry the molds over their head because the bridge was out or something. It's, a, it's a quite, a, quite a tale. But anyway, we also wanted to offer it in green because even though it was this color, the film was black and white. And so for all the publicity photos, this was the color they used. And it looks so cool. Little green men. I mean, it just doesn't get any more classic than that. So we offer it in both uh, colors and there's quite a story that goes along with these guys uh, You can watch at the end, but these are available as a Foam filled full body character. They're they're quite a bit of work and uh, You can order it in the green or the, the orangey flesh and It's also available just as a head bust with the bib so you can get just the head this historically has been one of the most sought after collectibles in the in the business they we made them for a couple years and that was it and they have not been available since but these are from the original molds this is about as cool as it gets for sci-fi monsters
You know what the foundation of distortions is? Yeah. Aliens. Yes, he does. Okay. Oh, come here, my little lab rats. Uh, I, Ryan's here. He'd love to meet you. <laughs> How are you doing, Dr. Quantum? How am I doing? I'm a brain in a vat, not some chatty barkeeper. But since you're here, Ryan, tell me, are you brave enough to survive the abyss of madness, or will you be crying for your mommy? He has a loaded backstory that says he's at a haunted asylum called the abyss of madness. Oh, okay. So that's where that came in. Gotcha. We all want to sort of anthropomorphize him. But what he's really doing is he's looking at the correlation between what we're talking about and what his script is. And he's going, is oh. this related to me or is this some babble? Apparently it is. So he's Let's going see to have another go. Right. You finally realize that I'm more than a simple parrot repeating on command. And Todd, oh Todd, I hope you're not trying to humanize me. Distortion has this new giant brain thing. I don't even know how to describe it, but it talks to you and it uses technology. And I don't know. I love seeing new tech being brought to the haunt industry uh, because I don't know. I just love tech and I love haunting. So it's like. Wicked Makers on YouTube, and uh, we're at the Distortions booth, and it's our favorite booth. It's always our favorite. Always. It's naturally constructed. Okay. And then inside, this course of metal structure with cylinders. What's your favorite of all these this year, you think? Um, I'd have to say probably the spider ant. Actually, no, maybe the banshee. I don't know. There's too much to choose. Like, it's crazy. I don't know. The I'm amount of detail. The scarecrow ramp. Yeah, That's like, pretty wicked. 